Advent Vespers. Please know that whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome among this community at First Congregational United Church of Christ. Advent is a season of preparation and welcome. We prepare to welcome again the birth of Jesus into our world. In that preparation, even though we wait, we are active. Jan Richardson describes it as a dance, a dance set to the rhythm of waiting. Waiting is an intricate process of receiving and bringing forth, of movement and stillness, of pain and joy, of being in the known and in the unknown. It is an individual journey, but one we don't need to take alone, especially when we choose to be connected with community. Tonight we light the second candle on our Advent wreath in honor of God's presence with us in our times of transition, birth, life, gender, marriage, school, jobs, retirement, illness, death. Those are a few of the big ones. Even as we make plans, we still always walk into an unknown future. May we welcome God's presence to bring new life into our transitions. Please join in the unison prayer. God of justice, peace, and righteousness, come into our midst this evening. Breathe your breath, your spirit of prophecy, your energy, your enlightening, your imagination on us. Wake us up, open our eyes, unplug our ears, that we might hear that we might see, that we might grieve, that we might dream, that we might follow the ways of your extraordinary kingdom. Amen. Our scripture reading tonight comes from the Older Testament, from the prophet Jeremiah, chapter 29. For thus says God, only when Babylon's 70 years are completed will I visit you, and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says God, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. I think you're in really good shape. That was the comment from Brian, our financial advisor, as we wrapped up our annual meeting. He wasn't talking about my physical shape, although I'd like to think I'm doing okay, at least in that department, but my ability to retire in the next four to five years, which is great, right? A combination of our good financial management and the resources offered by the Wisconsin Retirement System gives Patty and I the opportunity to re retire before the age of 60 if we so choose. We both know we are very fortunate to be in this position. As my, as my son might say, it definitely doesn't suck. But as I clicked off the Zoom call, my immediate thoughts were more of questions and concerns. When would be a good time? How much money will we need? When does Patty want to retire? She loves her job as a psych nurse at St. Mary's. When will I want to retire? I really enjoy what I'm doing too. What would I do with my newfound freedom or free time? And what questions have I not thought of? Just some background. I would say I've had some type of employment slash job since I was in the sixth grade. I followed in my dad's footsteps and became a paper boy delivering the Milwaukee Journal. 
and then caddied at a country club, worked a series of service jobs through high school and college, and then started my career with the state. Yikes. Almost five dec decades of work summarized in one sentence. That was quick. Uh, but, so you can see, this would be kind of a big transition for me. Retirement is also an acknowledgement of me getting older and accepting it. I've looked at stages in life as phases as opposed to dates. Age is just a number, my dad used to say. But there is no way to get around the fact that retirement and older age are joined at the hip. Hopefully a sturdy one. Unless, of course, you win the lottery. Patty will tell you that whenever she has brought up our post-retirement, what our post-retirement life would look like, I often would tell her it is too far out in the future to even think about. And then I would say I'm more focused on insert whatever event, program, issue that's on the immediate horizon. As I think about it, that was probably a defense mechanism to not think about moving into the later years of my life. However, after the immediate rush of questions passed, I started to think about what an opportunity I had and how retiring sooner rather than later is now more appealing than it might have been even a few years ago. Three significant events, events in my life that have brought me to, to, to this point. And it's probably, it's probably important to know here that I'm a planner and I like to be prepared. I'm not always a huge fan of surprises. The first was the death of my dad. In the summer of 2019, my dad started to experience abdominal symptoms often associated with a bleeding ulcer. After the symptoms did not respond to typical treatments, additional tests revealed an inoperable malignant tumor. My dad had always been extremely active and fit. In fact, he and I did a 30 mile bike ride just a few days before he got his first symptoms checked out. And he typically did something like that a couple times a week when the weather was nice. Most people couldn't believe that he was 74 years old. Despite aggressive treatment efforts, the cancer quickly spread, and I watched my dad age what seemed like 40 years in just a few months. By January 2020, he was gone. Fortunately, my father had retired in his late 50s and was able to really enjoy his retirement doing what he wanted to do, and he would always point out with who he wanted to do. But he and my mom always talked about traveling and spending winters in Hawaii or somewhere warm. And I'm sure he thought he would live for quite a while. He always said his goal was to live to be 100. So they had barely started to do that when he got sick. In retrospect, I wish they had done more of that sooner. The second event was the pandemic. Enough said. Ugh. Event number three, another unanticipated death. In May of this year, my best friend Dave died suddenly at the age of 55. While never the healthiest guy in the room, he had no signs of heart issues, but did not survive a massive heart attack. I met Dave as a freshman in college and we were roommates. We were in each other's weddings and considered each, each of other's kids our own. Our families spent holidays together for over two decades. Our interests aligned in almost everything, especially music and attending concerts. Because of the pandemic, I had not seen him, seen him in person since the summer of 2020, and I was at a distance on our back porch. But we talked regularly and did our annual family get-togethers via Zoom or FaceTime wherever we could. The week before he passed, we were talking about getting our vaccinations so we could get together in the summer. And then he was gone. And with his passing left years of planned experiences that would never happen. You can probably guess that the thread running through each of these examples is that events beyond your control can have life-altering impacts, no matter how much you try to plan in advance. And while there were probably other events over my life that reminded me that God had a larger plan for all of us, the back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back occurrence of these three has really brought it home. But given my reaction to my immediate, my immediate reaction to the call with my finance guy, I guess I'm still prone to slide back a bit. Some habits are really hard to break. So 
I have come to, the, to realize the opportunity to begin my life's next adventure sooner rather than later is a gift that I really should try harder to embrace. And while painful, the losses I have experienced have helped me to understand and accept this gift. I am fortunate that I am relatively healthy, have my mobility, at least for now. Patty is in the same situation, and we appear to have the means to maximize the experiences we'd like to have. Like many, we hope to really travel outside the U.S. and perhaps be able to live in different parts of the world for extended periods of time. And since Europe is not known for its accessibility, the sooner we do that, the better. There's still much on the horizon that I can't predict or control, such as future elections. I'm currently in an appointed position, so that may have an impact. The performance of our investments, the health and well-being of our parents and our kids, and our overall health. I am really trying to accept the unknown parts of this life change and try and look forward to the opportunities that it can provide. If he was still around, I'm sure I would be having conversations with my dad about what and when to do things. I'm quite sure by this time I would have heard one of his favorite pieces of advice. Attitude is 10% of what actually happens and 90% of how you react to it. So I look forward, or I'm really trying to anyways, to embrace this unknown, accept what happens as it comes, and make the next phase of our lives a wonderful adventure. And who knows, maybe there'll be a good surprise or two in there. And the next time we meet with Brian, hopefully face to face, I will walk away feeling more excited and concerned. Thank you.
As we enter a time of prayers, please join in the responses. Expectant God There are times in life when we enter into the unknown. It might be a time of joy as we anticipate something long awaited. It might be a time of uncertainty and pain. No matter what it is or when it comes, facing the unknown can be disorienting when we can't yet see clearly what is coming. When we find ourselves in unknown territory, God help us to embrace the range of emotions that come. May we allow our emotions to guide us as we sort out our feelings. In those moments when we want to change something about the situation or another person, direct our attention to what is possible to do within ourselves. As we move through our many reactions, guide us to a place where we can welcome your presence in the midst of it all. Comfort us in knowing that when you are present, anything that comes to us can ultimately be a part of that which heals us. Amen. Our benediction this evening comes from the book Night Vision by Jan Richardson. Draw us, God, beyond our patterns into yours, shifting, moving, many-colored, ever-changing, challenging, renaming, unsettling, disturbing, casting forth, and welcoming home. Go in peace. Thank you.